Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is Understanding Suicide Squad. So, with Justice League vs. Suicide Squad coming out this week, I figured it would be time for us to take a look at the lesser known half of the equation. I assume most of us know the basics of Justice League, so let's get caught up with the other team. Some of you might have just learned about the team through this year's movie, while others, like myself, are no doubt longtime fans familiar with this team's history. This video is meant for all, giving us the basic idea for the team, as well as the specifics for the current status quo in the Rebirth era. As well, it'll kind of be a little bit of a prelude to DC's first big event for their new continuity, the already mentioned Justice League vs. Suicide Squad. So let's begin. Caitlin Snow was once a Star Labs researcher. She was working on an advanced thermodynamic engine in the Arctic. Her base was attacked by Hive agents. They tried to kill her inside the engine she was working on. She hotwired the coolant system and merged with it. She became Killer Frost. Today, at Bell Rev Penitentiary, Caitlin has arrived to serve out her sentence after starting a criminal career. She has been taken here as part of her incarceration and has been recruited into Task Force X, also known as Suicide Squad. Frost is introduced to Colonel Rick Flagg, team leader, while kept under the watchful eye of a woman named Katana. Suicide Squad is a team full of supervillains who do the government's dirty work in exchange for more comfortable conditions and reduce time on their sentence. Long suspected to be part of the ongoing trend for villains to frequently find themselves out of prison, this group works carefully under the radar, committing operations all over the world officially disavowed by the United States, yet secretly under their direct control. Flag introduces Snow to her new team members. Deadshot, a mercenary. Caitlin senses a cold heart in him. Harley Quinn, the team's wildcard. Killer Croc, muscle. June Moon, an ordinary graphic designer who harbors the dark powers of the Enchantress. Captain Boomerang, who's there. And Caitlin finds the last member, El Diablo, beautiful. Though she was worried about coming here, she now realizes she shouldn't have been. They arrive at their destination, which Caitlin senses as the coldest room in the prison. Inside, she meets the woman in charge of Task Force X. Her name is Amanda Waller. She has a deal. Join the Suicide Squad and get years of your life back. Frost might even be able to get out of here with a clean record. If she agrees, Waller will put a bomb in her brain. She will not escape. She will follow orders. So the question becomes, do you want to join the Suicide Squad? And that's pretty much what you need to know about the team. I know it's short, but that's kind of what these understanding videos are all about. The basics you need to know about the current meta-narrative in the comics. This little feature was part of Suicide Squad number 8, which introduces the team's roster and pretty much everything you need to know about Suicide Squad. That's the fun part of the team. By its very nature, the roster is always shifting as deals are made, team members are thrown off the group or killed, and others are freed such that it isn't necessarily a consistency in the group's makeup from story to story, even within a run with the same writer. Yet there are always a few mainstays. In general, Amanda Waller is always in charge of this group, and I'm happy to say she's looking a lot more like her usual self as opposed to the new 52 days, which has been a lovely thing. Additionally, Captain Boomerang almost always finds himself as part of Task Force X. It's almost like he's the mascot or something. But I do think he's a valuable source of comedic relief, especially considering how Suicide Squad has been generally dark and edgy in tone, dating all the way back to the 1980s. Rick Flagg seems to have become a mainstay once more as well, and he goes back to the group's earliest stories before even John Ostrander first popularized the team with the very first volume of Suicide Squad, published in 1987. The team used to be kind of something else in the Golden Era, and Rick Flagg was a main member of that group. So having Rick around and having that connection to not only Ostrander's Suicide Squad, but even from before then, that's kind of cool. Deadshot, like Boomerang and Frick Flag, is also a major character that hails from this era. These days, Harley Quinn is also pretty much a core member of the group, and you know what? I like that too. That, in my opinion, is another great thing about Suicide Squad. It essentially comes in two flavors. 
There's the rough and deep political cuts of the team's early days, which are thoughtful and interesting and have a lot of stuff to say about Reaganism. And then there's the modern goofy fun of today's Suicide Squad. And I kind of like both. It's okay to enjoy these two aspects of the team, and I appreciate how there's this one side that can be intelligent and political, while the other is more bombastic and action heavy. Either works for me, and often Suicide Squad stories can offer a little bit of both. And as such, most Suicide Squad comics that I've read have been enjoyable, with a few notable exceptions. As for the Rebirth comics, those are pretty highly recommended as far as I'm concerned. I don't feel they'll be necessary for you to read the Justice League vs Suicide Squad event, but I just found them worth reading, you know? They were cool and pretty interesting and have a lot of great story moments, not unlike what we got out of the Killer Frost short you just saw. I'm also looking forward to DC's first big Rebirth event. What I might normally assume would be a pretty standard versus story is cast in doubt when we consider how much of Rebirth has already defied expectations. I have a feeling this story will be fun, and the premise seems like a good one to me. We're told that the story is that Justice League discovers the existence of Task Force X and aims to shut it down. It's a simple idea I think would have plenty enough mileage on its own for a full story, yet the solicitation at the end of Suicide Squad and the general climate of this thing suggests that there will be some extra twists and turns along the way. Considering all the interesting stuff floating around the general rebirth narrative, I expect a few big hints are coming our way for some of the larger story content concerning what happened during the New 52, the lost years for Earth's heroes, and all that other stuff. We'll know soon enough, but I am optimistic. If you haven't figured it out already, yeah, I'm covering Justice League vs Suicide Squad. It should be cool, so stay tuned for that. Let me know what you think of this upcoming event in the comments section below. Also, if you liked this video, be sure to check out our Patreon page. We actually just got our first ever prioritized request, and man, you guys just wait. It's gonna be epic. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.